Urban design started after World War II, specifically in the 1980s, and it was a reaction to sprawl. Urban designers wanted to reduce the dependence on cars as well as depart from different aspects of the city like federal mortgage tax, transportation policy, and elite and popular portrayals of urban and suburban cultures. Even now, cities have complex problems that urban design hopes to address, such as traffic congestion, air pollution, loss of open space, loss of sense of community, and people segregated by age and income level. Urban design has a consistent set of characteristics that are typically associated with it. One of the bigger defining qualities is its size, as urban designers hope to make each community a walkable distance, allowing the inhabitants to get to any destination located in their community within 5 or 10 minutes. The streets and pathways would allow a variety of transportation options, such as pedestrians and bicyclists, while departing from the commonly known parking lot and instead creating parking only along the sides of the streets in parallel fashion. This opens up the area as well as relieving congestion and providing realistic choices for transportation for inhabitants. Each of these traits is focused on the user, which is perhaps the most important aspect of urban design. Seaside, Florida is the first fully developed new urbanism town. Construction began in 1891 on an 80-acre patch of Florida's Gulf Coast and was influenced by Robert Davis. Robert Davis had the big idea to set out and create a town with beautiful views, walkable streets, a strong sense of community and connectivity, mixed use, mixed housing, and a focus on public spaces over private spaces. The versatile infrastructure and Seaside's foundation is a key factor of new urbanism. In order to incorporate walkability, a main focus of new urbanism, the architect started by specifying public spaces first, then filling the extra space with private buildings. In addition, the roads were built narrow to allow pedestrians to become dominant while walking on them. People in Seaside can access most things in need from work or home within a five minute walk. Seaside has detailed guidelines for every building before it's built. For example, houses had to have front porches and picket fences. It is common for people to stop by their neighbor's front porch for an afternoon chat. Next, the idea of amenities for everyone is another primary factor of new urbanism. Sand walkways allow for people to have a comfortable walk and easy access to the beach. The seaside pavilions also act as gateways to the oceans for everyone in seaside to share. Every house in the town has a unique privilege of having their own tower with a limited footprint. So residents who are not along the ocean can still experience waterfront views. Harbor Town in Memphis, Tennessee is another great example of new urbanism. Located on Mud Island in the Mississippi River, this neighborhood is connected to downtown by a short bridge ride. This growing neighborhood began in 1989 under the direction of Looney Rick's Kiss Architects. It began as a vision to recreate old Memphis neighborhoods close to downtown. Harbor Town is noted for its wooden houses, small lots, sidewalks, and curving streets. Garages face the alleys, bringing the pedestrian traffic to the front side of the houses. This increases the walkability of the neighborhood and brings the focus away from the automobile back to the front porch. The neighborhood has a mix of apartments, townhomes, and single-family homes. The townhomes are designed to look like mansions each mansion building housing five units. The single-family homes are called shotgun homes for their narrow, long shape. The architects wanted to use high-quality materials instead of fancy detailing. In some cases, new urbanism is not a good solution for a growing community. A case study in Savannah, Arizona uncovers several drawbacks and failures in the new urbanism movement. The first criticism is that benefits and amenities are limited only to the residents of the community. This creates exclusion for newcomers and outsiders. The second criticism is that developers can use the green planning aspect of new urbanism to make more money. They can buy suburban villages proclaiming the green principles without following through. The final criticism is that implementation is incredibly difficult in existing neighborhoods. Infrastructure change, expensive costs, and construction time can be most unfavorable. These are the criticisms of new urbanism.